VSA Scorpion SE Tactical. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load, and this is one fine looking gun. The BSA Scorpion SE. It's pretty much a longer version of the BSA Ultra. Only a few inches longer, nothing major. But same gun more or less. Um, but like I say, just a, a longer version of it. So let's give you the specs then, so you can sort of compare the two. Let me just refer to my notes. So, what have we got then? We got the BSA Scorpion SE. Okay. Pre-charged pneumatic, ambidextrous stock. This one is in the tactical synthetic. And the overall length of this rifle is 35 and a half inches or 895 millimeters. Barrel length is 15 and a half inches or 394 millim millimeters. Two stage adjustable trigger, manual safety catch, available in all the uh, calibers. Sorry guys if you can hear church bells in the background. It's it's a Tuesday night here. I've picked the wrong night to do a uh, tabletop review because I can hear the bell practice in the church just down the road. Never mind, but just try and put up with it. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, and it, the prime purpose of this rifle is for like HS, HFT or, or Precision Hunter, basically. Um, just compare it here to here, here we've got like the the BSA Scorpion H, uh, SE, which we've got on the table, compare it to the uh, the Ultra SE. Uh, as far as the um, the barrel length and the overall length is concerned, uh, there's quite a bit in it. I mean, the barrel length, 15 and a half inches in this one on the table. The Ultra is uh, only 10 and a half inches, so it's five inches shorter. The barrel is on the Ultra. Uh, so, you know, you, if you want something a little bit more pointy, uh, you know, carbine wise, then go for a BSA Ultra. If you want something, you know, a little bit more accurate with a longer barrel, uh, you're gonna, obviously going to get more shots per fill because you'll have a bigger uh, air reservoir, then, you know, go for the Scorpion SE. So, uh, did I tell you the weights? Uh, Six points can't read six point nine seven pounds or three point one six kilos on the SE uh, on the Scorpion SE. Overall weight is six point three pounds or two point eight six kilos on the Ultra. So this one's a little bit lighter, obviously. Sorry, this one's a little bit more heavier, obviously, because. The Ultra SE is smaller, it's going to be lighter. <sighs> what a nightmare. So, what have we got riding on top then? Let's talk about this actual combo that we've got in front of us then. So, riding on top is a sight mark triple duty 8.5 to 25 times 50. Not a bad scope, obviously not high end, it's fairly cheap one, uh, I'm not sure the price on this one actually, I'll throw it in the video somewhere. Um, not a bad scope really, you know, like I said, it's it's on the same sort of level as Hawk, um, you know, although I do, I do like the Hawk scopes, Hawk scopes when I can say it. My preference would be a Hawk scope, to be honest, but this has been all right. The only thing I don't like about it is the scope covers. Well, this one doesn't seem to shut properly. That was a bit annoying. It just kept popping open all the time, um, you know, when I'd store it, but <laughs> it's just one of them things. But uh, the actual scope, it's not bad. You know, it's got illuminated reticle, uh, red and green, uh, loads of different settings. Not a bad scope um, for the money, you know, so you can't really uh, complain. It's not like you're paying a, you know, a, paying big money for um, a little scope, so to speak. It is milled up, this scope is, um, but 
I didn't have any problem with it. The only thing I'd probably grumble about is when wearing gloves in the winter to adjust the turrets. Now they are easily adjustable but they, you have to unlock them by unscrewing this separate bit and then oh, let's unscrew it and then make your adjustment. That was a little bit fiddly wearing gloves but that's just me needing something to moan about. But apart from that, not a bad scope. But here I am reviewing the scope when we should actually be reviewing the rifle itself. So, what do you get then with the BSA Scorpion SE? Straight out of the box you are supplied with one magazine, standard BSA 10 shot magazine that will fit pretty much all the uh, new BSAs now. Uh, clockwork magazine, easy to use not a problem, a little bit fiddly, you know, uh, if you've got freezing cold hands, but you soon get the feel of it. Now in the video, uh, before we sort of talk about accuracy, in the uh, footage at the start of this video rather, uh, you may have noticed me shooting this gun with this, a Deben Whisper 180. Now, I've had this quite a while now, testing it on uh, various guns, you know, and someone did remind me in the comments to, you know, uh, throw in some sort of uh, results of what this thing sort of, you know, performing like. Um, and to be honest, I have had it riding on one or two guns. Uh, then I left it for a bit, kind of forgot about it, and then, like I said, I was reminded, so I threw it on this and it really did not perform well with this uh, with this Scorpion. Now, I'll show you the box to that while I've got it. That's it, that's the uh, Whisper 180. It is pretty cool, comes with all the adapters so it'll fit on pretty much any any air rifle. So you haven't got to worry about thread sizes, you, you're pretty much good to go with with all these adapters. You'll get it fitted on anything. Results wise, accuracy, <laughs> now you're going to laugh, this is my makeshift uh, target, I just drew around some two pence coins because my printer's out of action at the minute, yeah, I do need to go and buy some targets, so I promise I'll get some decent targets for the next review. But uh, shooting this with the muzzle brake, BSA's own muzzle, muzzle brake, which looks pretty cool, rather loud though. It does need a can, to be honest, if you're going to be hunting with this gun. But with the uh, muzzle brake on, this was at 25 yards. I know it's not a massive difference, but it's my kind of standard for sort of testing and reviewing guns. These were the groups I got. Ignore that group there. Um, they were pretty much the groups I was getting. So they were more or less, you know, more or less... Um, Fairly tight, you know, I'm happy with that, my shooting, that was uh, sort of benched as well. Um, I'm sure you guys can do way better, but uh, that was also using RWS Super Domes, which I always use for testing. 2.2 by the way, this rifle is, 0.22 calibre. Then, ignoring those two shots, pretend they're not there, those two shots on this one. Then I decided for the bottom three targets I put the can on and it totally threw the rifle out. The, I could see the pellets going down range through the scope literally just spiralling like that and they must have been going about I don't know 10 inches to the left they were just way off and I could not zero at all it was just an absolute nightmare. Gave it a a number of shots, probably two or three mags, something like that. Decided, no, I'm taking this off. Put the muzzle brake on, and then it was bang on again. Aimed at the middle one, bang on, three shots, boom. So, I really do not recommend the Whisper 180 by Deben for a BSA Scorpion so far. Not tested it on a lot of other air rifles, but 
I'll be getting back to you with the results as I as and when I do that. But as far as um, the BSA Scorpion and this moderator goes, uh uh, big no no. Don't even bother. You will just end up throwing the gun. Seriously. Um, thankfully, I'd zeroed this gun without the cannon first. You know, um, and just to sort of see how loud it was with the with the mu muzzle brake on. Um, but I just could not believe the difference. Obviously, it was a lot quieter when I put the can on, but the pellets were just going all over the shot. So I gave up with that in the end. Now this Scorpion is unregulated, so as the air sort of runs out, the pellets will start dropping off somewhat. But it's really not bad as far as uh, shots per fill. Uh, they say you can get around 100 shots in the 2.2 version, which really is pretty good. You know, um, 0.25, 100 shots, 177, around 65 shots. But it's got the new fast strike hammer system that increases efficiency. So they say, you know, shots per fill count by around 30%. So that's a big win uh, as far as the, uh, the BSA goes. But um, 10 mags or 100 shots, you know, it's more than enough uh, uh, a hunting trip. Without doubt, you know, you're not going to be carrying... 100 rabbits but by any means uh, when if you are you know good luck to you but uh, a real great gun guys I really do love these uh, BSAs they really have come on uh, in leaps and bounds uh, hopefully soon I'll be getting my hands on the new gold star uh, I'll give you a tabletop review of that as soon as I can as soon as I get hold of one um, but uh, as far as this BSA Scorpion SE goes, uh, just a nice looking gun. I mean, nice tactical looking gun if you want the uh, synthetic. They are available in uh, Walnut as well. Uh, you can get them in the camo as well. Uh, but this is the one I've got on loan at the minute. The synthetic. Really, really, yeah, uh, really nice stock, very comfortable. I really can't sort of uh, rave enough about the stock. So let's take a closer look at the rifle then. Oh, look, one of these blooming scope covers has popped open again. In fact, I'll just leave it open. Now, ambidextrous synthetic stock, which, as I always say, is great because I'm a lefty. So that is brilliant. Nice uh, chunky sort of cheek piece there. Um, good solid stock as well, really quite grippy. Uh, it hasn't got any sort of uh, checkering or, uh, well it's got a little bit of like stippling. It's really sort of um, tame, but the stock itself anyway offers quite a lot of grip. Now, the recoil pad or butt pad, whatever you want to call it, looks good, functional, does exactly what it says on the tin, pretty much. And then moving along to the pistol grip, nice fat pistol grip there, really chunky, doesn't matter if you're wearing gloves, very comfortable as well. And then the stock just flows basically into the trigger guard, which is all part of the stock, all polymer. And then you've got your takedown nut there if you need to take the stock off. And then you've got your air gauge, which is in a sensible place rather than on the end here where you've got to look down the barrel to see how much air you've got in. So Great job BSA, I do like guns that have not got the gauge near the dangerous end where you've got to look down. On the fore end you've got a bit of this sort of stippling, it's really sort of light stippling, it's uh, 
there's a little bit of texture there, nothing sort of uh, aggressive. But it works, it feels good, it's, uh, you know, a good solid stock, it feels good in the hand, it's comfortable. Um, and it gives you a good, uh, for me anyway, a good sort of uh, level as far as getting your eye in line with that scope. So a real nice stock. Now the trigger out the box, really nice. Can't fault the trigger at all. It is adjustable. Uh, let's give this a measure while we're talking about the trigger. Get the trusty Lyman trigger pull. I had no problems with the trigger straight out of the box, to be honest. Um, it was uh, really quite nice, you know. Uh, I'm guessing it was pulling it about. Let's take a guess. I think it was pulling it about two and a half. I'm going to make, my, make myself look stupid now. About two and a half pounds, something like that. That's what I thought. Anyway, that's what it felt like. Let's just cock it. There's no magazine in this gun. Let's just uh, see where it's going. Switch this on. Alright, and I'm well over. One pound, four ounces. Straight out of the box. Do you reckon that's too light for a hunter? You decide. But it felt good anyway. Um, it's, you know, it's a real nice smooth trigger. Can't really fault it at all, but you know, if you want it a little bit heavier, then you can adjust it, no problem. I probably would have it a little bit heavier, uh, especially if I was out in the field. But it's, personal preference to be honest. Now the actual trigger blade itself is metal. Nice and comfortable, no sort of sharp edges on there. Now they do say it is a two-stage trigger but it almost feels like a single stage to me. There's no sort of one stage and then another. It's just a feels like a single stage to me but all the technical information tells us that it's a two stage but it's it's a good trigger anyway so let's move around to the actual bolt itself bolt is nice it feels good you can get upgrades to these you know the nice sort of chunky um, bolt handles probably recommend that you know especially if you're wearing gloves a lot of the time um, can swap it round as well so it's uh, sort of true left hand um, but nice uh, sort of smooth bolt pull and, and sort of release uh, really is good no automatic safety which is what I like I like a nice good manual safety catch which is located here a good solid uh, quite chunky safety catch let's just fire that in a safe direction can't fault that at all and then moving along the receiver you've got all BSA markings there you've got the uh, mag well I'll just drop your mag in so obviously to load this gun fill that up with your pellets this lever here has to be in the forward position drop your magazine in push it home, push this lever back, close your bolt and you're hot and then every shot then is just cycling the magazine. Like I said in my review of the BSA Ultra which I uh, did last year I think um, and like with a lot of BSAs of these this type I don't like this bit I think it's just a bit I don't know they could have done a better job than that it's almost like oh we need a magazine stop let's get a piece of metal and just screw it there 
they could have done a better job than that. That's me, my preference, that's me just moaning. But it serves its purpose, it just, I don't know. They could make that look better, I'm sure. But a true free floating barrel, no clamp halfway down. That is a true free floating barrel. A lot of manufacturers rave that their rifles have got free floating barrel, but then they bang a clamp right here. Mm, does that compromise the free floating? I think so. And then we've got BSA's Loudner, as I call it. The muzzle brake does make this gun quite loud. You soon whip that off, half inch UNF, soon drop a nice uh, moderator on, but choose wisely. Definitely don't choose the Whisper 180 because it really does not do anything for accuracy. In my testing anyway. And then you've got your air reservoir here. And your filler area is, take this, um, that's actually uh, a plastic. No it's not, I've just done the tooth test. It's alloy. Yeah, it's aluminium. I thought it was plastic then. Uh, <laughs> that's like the... Uh, the cover to protect your filler, it's not bad, um, it's aluminium, just thought I'd tell you that. Bit of knurling on there. So that's that, and then you've got your actual filler area there. Nice and simple. Screw that back on. Because my hands are cold, it felt felt warm. That did. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was plastic or polymer. Now this is a little bit fiddly to get on. It's not the best. I found this earlier when I was filling it up. It was just a bit of a pain to get them threads lined up. I know I'm trying to do this on camera, but I've got to tell, tell you guys. You know, the problems I have, I've got to sort of relay them to you. Oh, I'm having a nightmare getting this back on. Oh, it's a real pain in the... There we go. Oh no, maybe not. That's it. For me, just... User error. Oh, just knocking the camera about as well with the rifle. But once that's on, I mean, it does look... Uh, pretty cool. Nice and sleek, hides everything away, you know. Keeps the muck out of there. And then going to the actual scope rail, you've got a dovetail there. Plenty of room on there to sort of adjust your scope, get your perfect eye relief, and get this gun pretty much set up, you know, to suit your needs. Now, while we're on the subject of the scope rail and the actual uh, scope itself. I'll tell you a little bit more about this scope. I'll just show you the box. Grab the box because I've got this on test as well with the rifle. Here's the box, almost as big as the rifle. This sight marks uh, boxes. But yeah, it's an 8.5 to 25 times 50 scope, so it's quite a powerful zoom. Um, that's the box, pretty much. Uh, got all your specs on here as well. Uh, MOA scope. I'll show you the uh, manual to it. I'm throwing stuff around in here. Not a bad um, manual to be honest with this scope. Gives you some nice details, some diagrams and Pretty much uh, everything you need to know. How to install it, bore sighting, zero in. You know, tells you how to use your mill dots. Um, if 
you don't know much about MOA, uh, I've got a video out. I'll throw a link into uh, this, the details of this video. I've got a pretty cool video out there that tells you all about MOA because I know a lot of people get confused. But uh, watch that video, it might enlighten you a little bit. But yeah, it's not a bad manual that comes with the, with the scope anyway. Um, not a bad scope to be honest guys, you know, uh, like I said, it's not high end, you know, it's not um, like a loophole or a S&B or anything, but it's not bad, you know, if you're shelling out quite a bit of money on a rifle, you know, and you want a half decent scope and, you know, get a pretty, pretty good combination, but just don't recommend these uh, sight marks scope covers and they're just not great so that's it then guys that's your rack and load review of the BSA Scorpion SE check out my video of the BSA Ultra SE and compare them like I said it is the same gun uh, this one's just the longer version but uh, check them both out you know depends what you want them for if you want something shorter more of a carbine you know a bit more pointable um, for sort of close-up work then go for the ultra if you want the full length version then obviously the scorpion but anyway guys as ever thanks for watching let's rack and load see ya